We're going to integrate using the method of partial fractions. And the first thing we need when using this method is a factored denominator. So notice that we can factor an x out of the denominator. That leaves this integral here, and we need to rewrite the integrand in order to integrate. And the method of partial fractions says that we can split up the denominator in this way. We're going to take the two factors from the denominator, split them up into two different terms. And if we're going to rewrite this original integrand, we need to find the a and b values that will make this line a true statement. So what we're going to do to find a and b is we're going to multiply both sides of this equation, every single term in this equation, by both x and x minus 2. If we multiply every single term by x times x minus 2, you'll notice we get a lot of cancellations. What we're left with is 3x minus 2 equals a times x minus 2 plus b times x. And there are multiple ways to go about finding a and b here. Since this line here has to be true for all x values, one technique we can use is choosing a specific x value that's going to allow us to solve for a and b. Let me demonstrate. For example, we could choose x equals 0. And if we plug x equals 0 into this equation, you'll notice that pretty quickly we get negative 2 equals negative 2 times a. That gives us an a value of 1. That choice of x worked out really well because it just canceled out our b term, leaving us with only an a. And you might notice that choosing x equals 2 is going to do something very similar. Plugging in x equals 2 is going to make our a term go to 0, and we can pretty quickly solve for b. Now that we found values for a and b, our partial fraction problem is pretty much complete. If we look all the way back at our initial setup here, we can now say that 3x minus 2 over x times x minus 2 can be rewritten as 1 over x plus 2 over x minus 2. Now I'm going to rewrite the original integral, and we're going to replace that integrand with what we just found. Okay, now we have an integral that can be completed. Each one of these two terms can be integrated fairly simply. The first term integrates to the natural log of x, and the second term integrates to 2 times the natural log of x minus 2. And because this is a definite integral, we're going to evaluate it from 4 to 5. So let's plug in our limits and finish this thing up. Plugging in our upper limit of 5 gives us this, and plugging in our lower limit gives us this. Now there are going to be a lot of different ways you can write this final answer. This answer is okay, but I'm going to compress all of these logarithms into 1. To do that, recall that you can take a coefficient in front of a logarithm and put it up on the power of the argument inside the logarithm. That means with the second term we're going to have the natural log of 3 squared, which is the natural log of 9, and with this last term we're going to have the natural log of 2 squared, which is the natural log of 4. Then recall that you can combine logarithms that are added and subtracted all into a single logarithm. All the positive terms go in the numerator, all the negative terms go in the denominator, and we will get a final answer of the natural log of 45 over 16. Now again, there are a lot of different ways you can write that out, but I think that's a pretty nice looking answer, so I'm going to zoom out on this so you can see all of the work that we did in this problem, and I'm looking forward to another partial fractions problem in the next video.